What's up guys, my name is Joe McGovern and today I'm gonna to take you through some practice exam questions to become an Autodesk AutoCAD certified user. So if that's something that interests you, grab a drink, grab some popcorn, and here we go. All right, what's up guys, here we go. Here's the nitty gritty. Go to Certiport, create an account. You have to purchase this test if you wanna become an Autodesk AutoCAD certified user. If you don't and you're just curious about the questions and some of the things that are on the test, Follow us now and we'll go through it together. You'll create an account on Certiport, which is a company that's owned by Pearson. Pearson is a huge company that does a lot of testing and exams and certifications. And then they will send you to Gmetrics. Gmetrics, once on there, you will have an account. You'll download the software through them. And that's what this is right here. You'll be able to go through, let's get rid of this. You'll be able to go through tests, new test. You'll see your Autodesk certified user uh, option and then you'll choose AutoCAD. And then in there, you can do a practice exam one, two, or three, and you can do concept reviews one and two. Now, like I said, these are practice exams, so they will help you get ready for the actual test. Becoming an AutoCAD certified user is a great thing that you can put on your resume in order to get your interviews and your potential jobs. So without further ado, here we go. We've got AutoCAD practice exam number one, uh, training mode is where the timer counts up and that'll tell you how long it took you to do it. Testing mode will time down from 50 minutes because the test is only 50 minutes long when you take the actual exam. So we're going to do training mode. Uh, I'm not going to resume a previous test that I had. I'm going to start a brand new one and it's going to ask you what version of AutoCAD you're running. I'm running AutoCAD 2022. So I hit select. Now you'll notice, I, I believe for you guys opening this for the first time, it will ask you or prompt you to download some of the files that you will need in order to take the exam. I've already done that. So what I would do is I would just hit this open Gmetrics templates directory, and that's gonna show me where the files are that we're gonna to need to go through the exam. One is called D10 grip editing, home and new floor plan, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and move this over here. Let's maximize AutoCAD. And then let's go back to those files uh, because for the first question here, it says open the new floor plan .dwg. All right, so we're double clicking on new floor plan. It might prompt you or ask you which software you want to open it in. You just choose AutoCAD and you hit OK. Going back to the question, you'll see that it says activate the table named view. This is not something that I've gone over on any video on my entire channel. So here you go. View. What you can do is you can save different views of a file that is a little bit on the complex side because rather than saying, okay, I want to work in the master suite on the second floor and then you zoom into that area or you try to find that area, you can create a view of it and just jump right to that view. So it wants us to open the table view and that's a table that's within, I believe, a kitchen or something that they're working on. So going back to the question, you'll see it says activate the table name view. We've already done that. Rotate the table by 90 degrees, selecting the geometric center of the table as the rotation point. How do we grab the center of a rectangle without having a center point? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is go into OS Enter. That's going to give you the object snap options. Make sure object snap is turned on. That's also F3. Otherwise, none of these will work. Make sure endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection, tangent, extension. Those are the ones that I normally use in most of my drawings. So you hit OK. You're going to draw a line from corner to corner. Now we have a midpoint. We can select this and do rotate. And then you can grab that at the midpoint, slide that down and click, or you can do 90 enter and that will rotate it as well. Let's get rid of the line. Select that line, hit delete. It wants to know what is the distance from corner one to corner two. So we got corner one, corner two. That would be here and here. There are two ways in my mind to do this. Number one would be to just draw a simple line from one to the other. To select that line, let's pretend this is closed. Select that line, right click on the black drawing space, properties, that's going to bring this up, and it'll tell you the length is 1.2520. Now, this is very important. And also, while I've got your attention, take a look up at my keyboard that's on the screen. If that's something that does not interest you and is in the way of what I'm doing, because I'm going to try the best I can to keep this out of the way of that, let me know in the comments. I'll turn that off in future videos. But I have had a lot of comments of people asking me, hey, I want to see your keyboard while you're doing this. All right, so let's see how this works out, okay? Um, so anyways, from one to the other, we have a line here. 
It says length 1.2520. We go back to the question. This is very important. It says number dot number number, okay? Which means that the answer is not going to be 1.2520. That will be wrong. Truncate that number 1.25. And then you're going to go ahead and hit next. And it will tell you, boom, that we are correct. That was question number one. Continue. All right, so question number two says to create a new drawing. You're going to go to the A, you're going to hit new, and you'll see there's an ACAD.DWT. That's a template file. You hit open. It's just a blank template file. We're going to take the polyline tool because in the question, it wants to know what is the length of the polyline. Using a polyline, create the shape as shown using direct input. Direct input just means that you're doing 15 enter, 23 enter, 27 enter, okay? So we can click anywhere we want on the on the black space, or if you're somebody who likes working at the origin, you can do zero comma zero. That's your starting point. Make sure that F10 is turned on. If F10 is not on, it's very difficult to get a straight line. A lot of my students make that mistake and they try to draw lines and they're like, eh, it's close, but it's not, okay? So F10, that gives you your green polar line. We can go 15 enter, and that means that we went 15 to the right. Now I'm going to put my cursor in the up direction, 23 enter. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to pan a little bit. When I pan, I'm just clicking on the scroller on the mouse. That scroller is a button. So if I click on that button, I can pan around. I can then see my entire drawing, and I will go 27 to the left, and then I'll close. I can either click here to close, or I can do C enter to close, okay? Okay. So now what was the actual question going back? It says, what is the length of, of the polygon? We've got number, number, dot, number, number. So what is the length? Same thing. If I didn't have this open, I'd click on my polyline. I would do a right click and go to properties. And you'll see it says length is 90.9422. So what do we do? 90.94, 90.94. Next. Boom. Correct. Continue. Question number three. Open the home.dwg. Again, you can hit this if you've already closed it, or I believe I still have mine open. Home.dwt. Activate the line named view. So same idea, view. They have a saved view. It's called line. In here, it's going to say, draw a line from point one to point two. So we're going in this corner here, point one to point two. That would be with the line tool there to there. Okay. Hit escape to get out of any tool that you're in that you don't want to be in anymore. What is the delta X of the line? Okay, now delta X and delta Y and delta Z, that means how far in that direction are you moving? We don't want to know the up and down. We don't want to know the length or anything like that. We just want to know how far are we go in left to right. So let's just pretend that this line was here. That would be your delta X. But we don't have to do it that way by moving the line. We can just do a regular linear line. By the way, dimension tool, garbage. Don't use it. What it does is it tries to tell you what different things are, and I just hate that. Okay, now if you're somebody that uses that, go for it, but I don't like it. Linear from here to here, you'll notice that you can either get a left to right measurement or an up and down measurement. We're going to want that left to right, so I click down to put that dimension down. I get 127.5. Now, wait a second. 127.5 is not enough here. We need to know what that next number is. So here's what we got to do. This is very important. DDIM. That is your DDIM dimensions or your dimension settings. Modify. Right now it's set to round to the first decimal point. We want to change that to be at least two in this drawing. But I like to see even more than that. So just throw it all the way down to the bottom. Hit OK and hit close. And you'll see there's a bunch of numbers in here. So 127.49 would not be the answer because nine is going to round that up. 8 is going to round the 9, 9 is going to round this. It's going to be 127.50, okay? So going back to that question, you got to throw a 0 at the end, 127.50. 127.5 would be wrong. Next, continue. We got that one right. So we're going back here. Two questions to go. We've got under the View tab, within the Views panel, select the Arc named View. So you go to View, you go to Arc, and we're going to draw an arc on this box right here. Draw an arc using point one, the center of the box, as the center. So we don't have a center yet. We have to go in here and draw a line. It's the best way to get a center point of any shape that you have on your screen. Okay. Uh, we have OS turned on already. That's object snap. We have the midpoint selected. So we are good to go. You're going to do arc. You're going to do center. And you're going to click the center or midpoint of this square. Then it wants to know the start point of the arc 
and the end point of the arc. Very simple, okay? Now, the question was, what is the arc length? So if we click on that arc, again, if you go right click and you go into properties, it'll give you the length. This is very important. This properties menu will give you a lot of different information, okay? So arc length is 33.32. Go back to the question. You'll see it does take those decimal places. So 33.32 and we hit next and you'll see we did get that correct. Here we go. So question number five, this is the last one we're gonna do in this video and then we will have future videos as well covering more questions. There are 30 questions on the exam total, okay? Open the home.dwg file. Under the view tab within the views panel, select the room B named view. Okay, so we go view, we go room B, and we got a room here. All right, so we're gonna draw a polygon within room B. Specify the polygon to be inscribed in a circle. Specify the radius is five and the number of sides is five. This question is totally backwards because when you go to the polygon tool, which is behind the rectangle tool, and you click on polygon, it's gonna ask you right away how many sides. You're gonna do five. Then it's gonna ask you where the center point is. They did not specify that uh, for this question, so we're just gonna click anywhere, and you're gonna do inscribed in a circle, and then it's gonna say what is the radius, and you do five enter. Okay, so we've got our inscribed five radius, five side polygon. Now let's back up for one second here. If I were to draw a circle here that was radius five, and I were to go do that polygon, five sides, uh, center is gonna be at the center of the circle, inscribed in the circle and five radius, you'll see inscribed means that it's inside a circle. So the points will touch the circle. Whereas if I go into that polygon tool again, and I do five sides and I go to the center again, and then I do circumscribed five radius, you'll see that it touches the outside of the circle. So the legs of the polygon will touch the circle. I think it's very important to understand the difference between those two things because that will probably be a future question as well. All right, so ooh, let's back up for a second. We don't want these two. And let's see what the question was. What is the area of the polygon? And we got two decimal points. So area is very easy because all you gotta do again is click on this. It'll tell you the area is 59.44. So we go back to our question, 59.44, no rounding, next and boom, question answered, question correct. So listen, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you guys could like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, I really appreciate it. I know you're learning something because you're still watching this video. So I appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.